Moist Critical has done it again and provided us with an interesting speedrun challenge. We had a muck runner, Exodus from the Earth, and now a game that you probably didn't even know existed but is an official Elder Scrolls game, The Elder Scrolls Adventures Red Guard. The challenge is simple. $10,000 are split amongst the top three finishers for the challenge. You have two weeks to completely break the game and get as fast of a time as possible. There's also a $1,000 prize pool for the biggest time save found. Just like a muck runner and Exodus from the Earth, this challenge also has drama. And it's also juicy. But gotta explain the game, the tricks a bit, so that, you know, it kinda makes more sense. With that being said, let's get into it. To put it very simply, you are a pirate looking for your sister who apparently causes a lot of problems with these people. They get mad at you, you do a bunch of quests, and then you get out of there. This game, like Exodus, had a speedrunner who had already done a speedrun of the game. This man's name was Solitan. And he was so into the game that he even had his own guide that he created, which... He was the only person on the leaderboard with a run, so I guess no one got into the game until this challenge. At first glance, the game seems pretty simple. All you really have in terms of movement options is jumping, which gives you a slight boost forward. Similar to Ocarina of Time's rolling, it's actually kind of a timing thing. If you just spam jumps, you'll get caught up and you'll lose speed. In Ocarina of Time, if you spam rolls, it's not as fast as timing them, so you have a little bit of running in between the jumps or in between the rolls. Combat is pretty much just down to spamming jump while slashing because for whatever reason, the enemies can't block jump attacks. So nice code in there. And one of the biggest mechanics that makes this game interesting for speedrunning is the fact that you can ledge grab everything. For whatever reason, everything's ledge grabbable, even areas which you clearly shouldn't be able to ledge grab on. As long as you get the height, you can ledge grab there. There's also these things you can get called feathers. You know, like from a bird. They turn you into a bird. If you step on these platforms and you face a direction that you want to go, you turn into a bird using the feather and then teleport to the nearest platform in that direction. The biggest issue with this game and why it is difficult to speedrun is there's an input delay of a quarter second, which if you've ever tried speedrunning with an input delay of even, you know, a tenth of a second, it's uh, very difficult. In Mario 64, a quarter second, if you had that much delay, you wouldn't even be able to time a wall kick. It's a lot, basically, okay? Input delay sucks. The reason being is that this game is really old, and whether you get it on Steam or GOG, good old games, you're going to have input delay due to the fact that the game is running on a DOS emulator, and this emulator is old and not optimized. Players would find out quite quickly that the Steam version was laggy, just overall, not running very well compared to the GOG.com version, to the point where if runners were submitting runs on the Steam version, players were requesting that they refund their Steam purchase and get the game on GOG. They were not sponsored by GOG, neither am I. The moderators wanted everyone to compete on even grounds, as there had been minor issues in the past challenges with different people's CPUs. You know, you didn't want anyone to have an advantage with a CPU that's better than someone else's, so they decided that the game would run at 150,000 CPU cycles, which if you don't know what that means, basically it just makes it fair for everyone, even if you have a bad computer. This would be the source of many heated conversations in the Discord that I'll touch on later. Now, what was found in the first day of this challenge completely shattered the game. The very first thing to be discovered in this game is the credit speed boost. If you press F10, it opens the credits, and if you close it, for whatever reason, you get this little speed boost. This wasn't particularly useful yet, however, it was the first stepping stone towards this game getting busted wide open. The first thing that was found and used in a world record run was NPC door clipping. By using an enemy and standing yourself up against a wall or a door, by getting damaged, you would get pushed by the enemy through the other side. It was then quickly discovered that by spamming sheath and unsheath of your weapon, you would be invincible and you'd still get the boost. So this was a huge find that allowed you to not only avoid taking damage, but get some clips. Resurrection glitch was found, which is an interesting one. As you die during the animation, you can quick save. And then, once you actually die, you can reload your last save, but you aren't dying. You're able to walk around and you have zero health, so you die immediately. And while that seems not that useful at the moment, you'll come to learn that Resurrection Glitch is sick. Then, a pretty big glitch was found. Sword Sheath Glide. By pressing forward, sheath, and jump all at the same time, you would do a lunge forward that warps you. Again, it, it didn't have that much use at first, 
But, you know, this is how glitches usually start. You find little bugs of the game and then you apply those to other things. And before you know it, you're breaking the whole game. Another big find was double jumping. By jumping in the air and then toggling a button that allowed you to switch from walking to running, you could essentially float and then jump a bit higher in the air. This was useful for getting more height, but again, no super practical uses yet. But the skip, the big grandiose skip that would completely ruin this game, that would turn the game from a two hour speedrun into under a 20 minute speedrun was palace skip. This could be done by using an NPC in the palace area, which you come into immediately after entering the palace and doing a door clip here. Oh, no fucking way. You could skip through all the other parts of the game all the quests that would ultimately lead you to get into the point that opens that door in the first place, which ended up being around an hour and 35 minutes saved. That's right, an hour and a half. Possibly the biggest time save I have ever seen found in a game since I've been in the speedrunning community. Over a decade, I have not witnessed such an incredible find. So to kind of recap where we're at at this point in day one, the run looks something like this. You spawn, you get two feathers, you jump along this bridge, then you use this boat to go to the graveyard, which then you go to get Nagasta's amulet. Then you retrace your steps all the way back to the boat on the bridge, turn into a bird again, teleport to the town, go into the palace using this amulet. Then you do the palace skip. And at that point, you're basically just a few minutes from the end of the game where you have the final boss fight and it's GG. The most annoying thing to figure out at this point was the final boss fight because the boss kind of collapsed your cheeks. He does a lot of damage. You get killed very quick. So players learned that you could lure the boss up onto this blimp, then lower yourself below him so that most of the time when you aren't in the air slashing, you are avoiding his hits. And when you are in the air slashing, you're hitting him. So that's that's like the, the majority stuff. But you know, at this point, this is when the run started to get really optimized and they had started finding the smaller time saves that would result in players ultimately getting a very, very fast run. Crowbar skip. Normally to get through this gate, you would need to get a crowbar, which then allows you to spin a wheel and then it opens the gate. However, you can just jump and ledge grab the top of the gate, which then evolved into just jumping through the door, which then evolved into sword sheath gliding through the door. Next, there was a skip called the graveyard lever skip, which saves around 15 seconds, which at this point in the run was a huge find. By doing a very precise jump off the edge of this hill, you can just ledge grab the hill. Normally you'd need to crank this lever. It would uh, turn this little bridge object and allow you to walk up there to Nagasta, but you can just jump it. Now for the ending sequence, once you are in the courtyard and you're making your way up the scaffold into the final boss, there's a crane skip. By doing a double jump, you can ledge grab onto this crane, then ledge grab onto this house, and then you're basically just a few jumps away from the top of the scaffolding. Crane skip ended up saving about 10 seconds. Eventually runners discovered that there are actually strength potions, which double your damage, which would turn out to be a huge help for the final fight, as there was a strength potion that was only a little bit off the path Path that you would take to go back to the boat and this became part of the run. One issue is when the player drinks the strength potion, it takes them a couple seconds. It does this uh, stupid animation. However, they found that you could drink the potion in the air where you jump, drink the potion, use the key to get through the door, and you come out the other side with the strength potion applied and no animation. Pretty cool. Players eventually found that instead of going back through this gate that we used for crowbar skip, you could instead go on this little slope of land and do a sword zip through the hill onto the other side of the wall, saving a few seconds. Lastly, one of the biggest adjustments to the route was the resurrection route. Remember that resurrection glitch I was talking about where you die and then come back to life with zero health and how it was kind of not really useful? Well, it became useful. They found out that after doing this glitch, for whatever reason, you can just walk straight up slopes even if they're really steep. In this route, you would go in the graveyard in a different path, do the resurrection glitch so that you could use this slope to get to the other side instead. Then, because you died in the graveyard, you were able to die easier at the end with a simple jump. After doing this glitch, you would get the big time save of walking right up the slope, avoiding having to do the crane skip double jump, which was pretty difficult. Eventually, players found that you could entirely skip the cauldron sequence in which you press this wheel to move the cauldron, then take the rope. Instead of dying in graveyard, players would make it into the palace, skip through the door, take enough damage from the cauldron until they're one hit away from dying, and then once they get through the door with the key, dying to a guard for the resurrection glitch to walk up the slope. 
Now what you came here for, what people love to hear, the drama, the juice. No, 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 this isn't drama. This is a community development of the game. So remember when I talked about how the moderators decided that the limit for CPU cycles would be 150,000? Up in the cycles to 200 or even to 250,000, was possible even on pretty terrible hardware. And by making this change in the CPU cycles, it would make the game run quite a bit better. And it would also decrease the input delay, which was nice. Throughout the challenge, all players were hoping that this change would be made. However, due to a need for a lot of testing using different CPUs and different CPU cycles, because they didn't really want to run into any issues which had been shown in previous games, whereas, you know, in a muck runner, people were literally going out and getting new GPUs just to play the game better or move faster, people didn't want to have this problem again. And so ultimately people were pissed, but you know, as speedrunners do, you press on, you adapt, and you, you make whatever works work. Now this one, this was an interesting problem that happened. So you remember that, that credit glitch where you press the credit button and you get a little boost? After multiple days of the challenge, one man in particular named Winston found a very clever use of this menu glitch. When you combine the resurrection glitch with taking out your sword and walking, you can just walk through the water. However, walking forward with your sword out is really slow. You don't move very fast, even with the menu glitch. But if you walk backwards, because classic speed running, for whatever reason, you, you just go backwards and weird things start happening, you can just go through the water, spamming the credits button and sliding all the way through this water with no issue. It is a terrible experience. And even though this proposed skip would have saved around 20 seconds, the community generally decided that they didn't want the game to look like this because it hurts their eyes and it seems really annoying, which I agree. However, the Super Swim is kind of badass. And in fact, there's going to be an unrestricted category that is going to be added to the leaderboard where shit's gonna get real crazy. And the last really big community discussion that is even ongoing as I'm talking about this is the prize money awarded for people who find the biggest time save because Time saves and speedrunning are usually found, as I illustrated, with different glitches working together with different glitches. On Trigger is the person who found the biggest skip, Palace Skip. However, it hinged on the glitch found by Zach Runs of clipping through doors using an NPC. It becomes hard to pick one solid creator of a trick when it uses tricks found by others. Even as I think about it, I'm stumped. I don't know who you award the money. I'm getting confused even just talking about it right now. But maybe if you have some great idea, you could leave it in the comment section below. And remember to subscribe. Apart from the drama and all the discoveries, how did this world record evolve? It's actually a pretty interesting journey. Let me take you on it. Solitan's original world record of 158.34 was crushed after Palace Skip had been found with a 39.10 by Mickey. Mickey, alongside others like Bob Toad, Zach Runs, and Unity B, who were also participating in previous moist challenges, continued to push the record down. It would go all the way down to an 1140 by Unity B, where it really started to slow down, and instead of finding any major discoveries, it was up to the small optimizations throughout the run and just clean gameplay to lower the record. This game is so bad, man. Instead of multiple records a day, like it was in the beginning of the challenge, as it got to the second week, it would be at most one record a day. But no one could prepare for what would come during the final day of attempts. Starting on this final day, the world record was 1120 by Zem92. Not good enough, job's not finished. All of the top runners came together and grinded their butts off. Five hours just before the end of the challenge, Unity B would get a run going. He would hit the graveyard lever skip. He hit his palace skip. He made it past the cauldron. He hit the resurrection at the end, wandering up the slope and ultimately finished beating Zem's run with an 1119. Oh my God. Ah! Not even more than half a second. With only a few hours left in the challenge, it seemed as though Unity was going to claim his second win of a moist challenge as he had won previously in the Exodus from the Earth challenge. However, Kisimov would also get an 1119. Is it it? It is! It is by two milliseconds! Oh my fucking god! Let's fucking go, dude! It was 0 0.02 seconds faster. However, as the timer for the challenge ended, Zem had a run going. It wasn't an insane run, but it could have been enough to world record. I'm gonna have to take this. It's now or never. All right, let's see what I'm made of. In 
In the world of poker, we call this kind of situation having a chip in a chair. A chip in a chair. I have no regrets. GG's everybody. And with that, the challenge was over. Or was it? With Unity and Kissimoff both getting 1119s that were so close to being tied, to be certain the community began to retime their runs to ensure who had won. And they tied. They actually tied. After nearly two weeks of nonstop grinding this game, both of them putting upwards of 200 hours into this game, they somehow ended up with the exact same time. So they ended up splitting the first and second place prizes. Both players, Unity and Kissimov, walking away with $4,250 and Zem getting $1,500. The craziest part of this whole thing is the top three were only half a second apart from each other in total. It was such a close and tight ending. And despite the game, you know, being a bit clunky and a bit weird in parts. Bob Toad is currently crafting the worst bridges <laughs> split of all time right now. <laughs> Crafting? He's cooking, up. He's cooking up in the lab right now. <laughs> <laughs> it had its charm, for sure. And that's the story of Elder Scrolls Adventures Redguard. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a good day. Thanks.